What's up, family? The news of the day is very simple. We are 14 days away from one of the biggest sporting events of the year. That is the NFL Draft, where the man behind me, Caleb Williams, is obviously going to be the number one overall pick. But here's my thought. I think Caleb Williams can instantly lead the Chicago Bears to the playoffs, which we haven't seen a number one overall pick do since Andrew Luck. Remember, Andrew Luck had it set up for him. The reason he went number one overall, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning got hurt. The Colts had a really bad season. But that roster still had roughly three Hall of Famers on it. There was still a Reggie Wayne. There was still a Dwight Freeney. There was still a Robert Mathis. Cut to Caleb Williams. You're telling me you got DeAndre Swift in the backfield. You have Keenan Allen out left. You got DJ Moore out right. You got defensive juggernauts and sweat and Edwards, Johnson, etc. So I think the Chicago Bears in two weeks from now will be a completely different organization. This is Speak heading to the desk. This is Dave Hellman. Dave, it's good to see you, sir. I got to bring the energy yeah. since yeah. I'm in the shady. <laughs> Before we start, though, you got to go two buttons down, because last time Shady was on the show, he was showing some of that chest. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I when I have the NFL career <laughs> that Shady has. Two buttons down, man. I'll show your that. chest, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, far end, that is James Jones, Super Bowl champ to his right. That is the brilliant mm. Joy Taylor. This is Speak. We are about to have a phenomenal show. Thank y'all for tuning in. You can watch anybody. You're hanging with us. We don't take it for granted. Now, James Jones, what the Bears don't take for granted is the fact that Caleb Boyd Williams is an yep. absolute dog. Awesome. Number one overall picks, they don't go to situations like this. Yeah. Kyler Murray did not. Jameis Winston did not. Joe Burrow, he did not. Uh, we can keep going throughout the list. Jared Goff absolutely did not. Jamarcus Russell did not. Carson Palmer, if you want to go back to the early 2000s, he did not. Andrew Luck is the last quarterback to go to a situation yeah. that had this much talent on the roster around him. Mm -hmm. Caleb Williams, he has this much talent talent around him. I was thinking about it in the NFC. It's not too many teams whose skill position groups I would take ahead of the Chicago Bears. So do you expect Caleb Williams to lead the Bears to the playoffs year one? Whew. I know he's going to be a rookie, right? But I do. And the main reason why I say that is because do we believe at this table that Caleb Williams was better than yes. Andrew Luck coming out of college? Mm. I'm saying, coming out of college. Based upon the tough. current prototype, asking, I, would say, I would say yes, based upon the current. And I came out with luck. Joy, Joy? I mean, I'm, try what was, I'm <laughs> trying to think of a catchphrase because there was a suck for luck. There, ooh, that suck for luck was like the original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like did, did, did Caleb ever get one of those, by the way? No, but we knew. We knew. So, yeah. so we can agree that they the same? Coming out. There, different there, people. There was different, 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 different people. I would say uh, there was plenty of hype around. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So with the Bears, they won seven games last year with Bajan and Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. All right. You get Keenan Allen. You have DJ Moore. You get Everett. You already had uh, uh, Clements there. You got a solid offensive line. You get Swift. Mm. Um, so for me, you upgraded at the wide receiver spot. You upgraded at the running back spot. We all can agree that Caleb Williams is better than Justin Fields? Yes. Yeah. So you upgraded at the quarterback spot. Why can't that equal four more wins? Four more wins equals 11 means playoffs. But everything that people say Caleb Williams is, is if Caleb Williams comes into the pros and is a solid player, I'm not saying he has to be a superstar player. If he's a solid player, he should be able to get this Bears team to the playoffs with what they have, especially on the offensive side of the ball. The defense was playing at a very high level the last stretch of the season. So for me, I know the Packers is in there. I know the Lions is in there. But I expect Caleb Williams to get this team to the playoffs with what he has. Okay, guys. Uh, that was 14 years ago that Andrew Luck did that, right? 14. That was 14 years ago. Don't seem like it, but that was 14 that years ago. That makes me feel so old. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't want to point it out, but I had to write it down. I, I would have like, said like eight or 10. Uh, no, nope, 14. Nope. 14. 14. 14 years ago? 13. 13, 13. 13. Oh. Same thing. All right, okay. It was 13 years yeah, ago. Yeah. It was more than a decade ago that Andrew Luck did that. Mm -hmm. Justin Herbert had a tremendous rookie season. Mm -hmm. Looked phenomenal. Yes, he mm -hmm. did. Looked like a star. They were seven and nine. Mm. Um, C.J. Stroud, while had an, an incredible rookie season, blew everyone away. I think Tamika Ryan should have been coach of the year. No they were, they had a tremendous season. Can we, can two things be true? Yes, of course they Always, can. yeah. Two things can be true. All of that could have happened and they played in a very bad division. 
My issue is who is, who's the Bears, whose position is the Bears taking? Because let's assume, all right, let's just make some assumptions here. Uh, the Lions are not gonna get worse. They are in the division. The Packers are not gonna get worse. They are in the division. Only one team wins the division. So let's give it to the Lions. Packers. Oh. Let's give it to the Packers. Do you think the Lions are a playoff team? Yes. Yeah, okay. So let's go to the Cowboys and the you got the Eagles, Eagles to worry okay, about. Okay, let's assume yeah. one of those two teams wins the division sure. and one still makes the playoffs. Okay, so now we are in the wild card here, right? Because we don't think that the Bears are actually going to We just accounted for two wild cards. Okay, yeah. right. So they're fighting for the last wild card division. I, I love playing fantasy football, but this is how the structure of the sport works. So which team in the NFC do you think is going to fall off so much that's going to provide an opportunity for Caleb Williams to come in and win four more games as a rookie in a very tough division, because what we think of this division is, is not real. It is a very tough division. The Packers beat the Cowboys down on the road in the playoffs. The Lions went to the NFC Championship game. These teams have momentum, they have experience, they have postseason wins, they have quarterbacks, they are returning, they got better, they're in their division. So I just, it's not about what I think Caleb Williams is capable of doing, it's the fact that I just can't seem to forget that other teams are actually good and that they are in the division and that they recently accomplished great things. And I can't just dismiss what everyone else has been building to accommodate for one player that's going to a team that has no culture, that has no history of winning as of late, whose coach we do not know is a good head coach, to all of these, these new additions, new additions, by the way, are all on paper, have not all played together. We're talking about Andrew Luck, and you listed off all the incredible players that he walked into that were already there and already had experience playing together. So there's a lot of factors to just sit here and expect Caleb Williams to come in and win four more games as if that's an easy thing to do in the NFL. And then have the expectation that if he, just because he plays well or even kind of good, that they're just gonna be in the playoffs. Like, did all these other teams walk off the face of the planet? Do they exist? It's a lot, oh, it, the is. NFC is a lot more competitive than it even looked at this time last year. Correct. You what see about, the Rams even, even being the ahead NFC of schedule. South, even the NFC South, like, yeah. okay. The Falcons are a team you have uh, to what, account what, for Are now? the Falcons not going to be in the wild card chase? Are yeah. the Bucks not going to be in the wild card oh, chase? I'm with you. With, with all due respect to my esteemed colleague, James Jones, I see, I see what's going on over there. What's up? He's a Packer. <laughs> And that yeah. is, I, th I think what James just said is something that's going to be happening all over so the NFC. That hurt me to say that because I don't even. Rock no, it. but see, here's the thing. <laughs> this is, this is what I expect to hear in Green Bay, and Detroit, and maybe even Minneapolis, depending on what they do about their quarterback. But you say, oh, Bears, you got the number one pick. You got Caleb Williams. You need to be better right now. I thought we spent all spring hearing about Caleb Williams, so you better be good right now. That is what the Bears' rivals are going to say. I just don't think it's realistic. I don't think that's the NFL, and I don't think it's fair to Caleb Williams for that matter. I, I, I can see you. I knew you were. I knew you were going to grimace at that. Were we doing this for C.J. Stroud last year? C.J. Stroud wasn't generational. C.J. Stroud is a he hell was not of a generational. And he, he wasn't first. close to, to generational. Put, to put a guy immediately, he's not even officially a bear, to say you've got to make the playoffs or you're not successful, it's ridiculous. The Bears have finished in the bottom half of their division eight times in the last 10 years. They've been to the playoffs twice in the last 13 years. This is a, a poverty organization. They're trying to fix that. But to launch them into that category the night they draft Caleb Williams, because they've done a good job of setting him up, which they have, that both of those things can be true, but to just to take it from point A to point F yeah. is just not it's not fair and it's not right. And no, I, th I think the Bears could make the playoffs in 2024. And the fact that we're even saying that is crazy. But to expect it, I think that's a little rich. I expect it because he's generational. Generational players do generational things. The last quarterback that was a rookie, number one overall pick who did this was Andrew Luck. The quarterback before that, mm -hmm. let be fair. The, the last quarterback that we described as generational was Trevor Lawrence. And Correct. we did describe him that way. Correct. And his rookie season was a disaster. Of course, for reasons that we won't elaborate on on this show, but obviously there was a lot of coaching turmoil. Just saying. Um, the reason I expected those because he's generational. And generational people go do something generational. Not to mention the Bears' talent is different than any other number one overall picks talent. That Jags team was not good. They were not, I mean, that Jags team went into camp with Tim Tebow. 
mm. with all due respect. Mm. So, like, the yeah, Jags yeah. team just wasn't good. Um, when I think about even what the Texans did, shout out to the Texans. Their roster is not what the Bears roster is. The Chargers roster is not what the Bears roster is. I didn't make the same assumptions that you all made. I, I, think, I think it's 60% of the playoff teams turn over each year. So I'm not, have, yeah. I don't make the assumption that the, I know James, you love the Packers. I'm not making the assumption that I can't guarantee they'll get no, better. No. I can't oh, guarantee no. that Jordan Love wasn't a one hit wonder. Yeah. I do want to see it some more. I can't guarantee that the Lions are going to continue to improve. I believe in what Dan Campbell said at the end of his presser. Yo, 30% of the roster is going to turn over. It will be hard to be back. I can't continue to assume they'll be back there. I can't assume that the Rams without Aaron Donald are going to be competitive, though I did doubt the Rams last year, but when you lose a top five player the game has ever seen defensively, I can't assume they'll be back there. I think it'll take 11 to win the division. Mm -hmm. I think the Bears can get to 11. And more than anything, Justin Fields is as good as, a, Caleb Williams is as good of a quarterback as I have ever seen coming out of college. I came out of college with Andrew Luck, same draft class. He's just as good based upon how the game is played today. That's why I think so. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and, and we are sitting here talking about Caleb Williams like this because of what he did in college. Obviously, we have no clue what he's going to look like in, in, in the NFL. But he is an upgrade from Justin Fields, yes. everybody which everybody tells me. And everything just falling in place for this dude. You got the third easiest schedule. You got all these weapons. Like, you don't even truly have to play. Like I'm saying, the team doesn't have to be on his back. Usually when you're the number one overall pick, you have to put your, the team on your back to win games. He doesn't have to necessarily do that. Some of these games, he might even be able to manage some of these games. Don't turn the football over. Like, the defense was playing lights out the last eight games. They are the number one defense in football. Yeah, so, like, top, it's not like he's walking into a situation where we're saying, man, Caleb Williams, you got to put this team on your back. You have really good pieces around you to help you succeed. And if you're that good, and if you like that, you should be able to get this team three to four more wins and get them into the playoffs. Uh If you we're like talking that. about the Chicago Bears, right? That this is the team we're talking about? Yes. Played against them a lot, yeah. The Chicago <laughs> Bears. 85 was a long time ago, yes, They've that had team. Six seasons where they won more than 10 games in like 30 years or something. I might be skipping a year or two. Is it 32? I don't know. A long time, multiple, multiple decades. There is no culture in this building. They have no established history of winning in the past decade. Everything we're talking about is on paper. It's not like he's walking into a situation with Mike Tomlin or Tony Dungy or... Uh, Andy Reid. Andy Reid. Like, this... Uh, no disrespect, but there's nothing... There's no identity in this building whatsoever. They're not, like, a really good run team that just, like, needs to add some elements to their offense or something. I understand they're not the worst team in the league because they are in this position because the Panthers did them the favor of being the worst team in the league. And generally speaking, you are going to the worst team in the league if you're the number one overall pick. So he's going into what looks like on paper a good situation for a number one overall pick. I don't think comparing the Andrew Luck situation to this is, is and I don't like using the word fair, fair at all. It's not a comp. Not when you talk about the fact that those players had played together before. A lot of the stuff that we're excited about in Chicago are additions that they made this offseason. Keep in mind, this is a rookie quarterback who has, we are assuming, is going to step into this offense and just play lights out. He's not, a, he's not a primarily running quarterback. He does like to throw the ball. In fact, he said he doesn't like to run that much. It's not even what he wants to lean into. So I, I can't sit here and say automatically that, that I, I hear you, teams turn over, and maybe we are, there'll be injuries we don't account for, but there are teams that have been building. There are teams that were in the postseason that played really well. Other teams made improvements as well. I don't think everyone's just splitting the waters, splitting the Red Sea for Caleb to walk to the other side here. It's going to be hard. And if okay. he doesn't get them to the playoffs, which I think is an insane ask of a rookie going to the Chicago Bears, who have never had a quarterback throw for more than 4,000 yards in the history of their organization. This is one of the cornerstone organizations in the NFL. They are one of the teams you mentioned when you talk about, if you were like the aliens came down, hello, hi, alien, sir. This is one of the teams you should know about. And they haven't had a quarterback throw for more than 4,000 yards in the history of their organization. I just feel like it's a tiny bit above a big ask. And there really isn't a comp for this situation that he's going to. It is very unique. And I, I don't think it's going to reflection of, at all of how he's going to perform as an NFL player if he doesn't get the Chicago Bears to the playoffs this year. It's interesting. A unique, I think every situation is unique. So I do agree. I think it's unique. The reason I, I draw the parallel to the Colts situation is because Chuck Pagano was a head coach. Mm -hmm. Hadn't been a head coach before. 
Chuck Pagano was a defensive head coach. He'd been a defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens when he took over in 12 for the Colts. I, I don't believe in Matt Eberflus. That's my question. I don't like, to me, organizations and their history, it matters to a point. I don't think it matters because I don't like when people talk about, well, this organization, what's it really mean, right? When I was in Cleveland, I was like, no, Cleveland's bad because the coaching here is bad. Not because just like there's this umbrella over the Cleveland Browns that's bad. No, the coaching is bad. Kevin Stefanski showed up. You've been in the playoffs twice in the last four years. When I think about the Bears, defensively, that's what they're known for. Mm. Should be defensively stout. Caleb, you shouldn't even have to throw for 4,000, hopefully, because DeAndre Swift gave you 1,500 all-purpose last year. Keenan's going to get busy. DJ going to get busy. So I don't need Caleb to go throw for 5,000. I need Caleb to go out there and play like a generational talent should play for. Keeping in mind, Andrew Luck didn't win rookie of the year. Robert Griffin did. Andrew Luck just won 11 games and made it to the playoffs. So I don't even need Caleb Williams to be some sort of statistical anomaly. Don't be Herbert. I don't need 35 passing touchdowns as a rookie. But be the generational quarterback you're set up to be and Keenan Allen, be what you've always been with God knows how many quarterbacks and how many coaches. DJ Moore, be what you've always been with different quarterbacks, different coaches, de different schemes. And DeAndre Swift, you went to Philly last year and went for 1,400 in your first year there. Be what you've always been in different coordinators, different quarterbacks, different schemes. If everybody just do what they do, Caleb, you do what you do, the Bears should do what they haven't done. But we don't know what Caleb is going to do. Correct. That, that's, that's the whole thing. The guy's not in the NFL yet. I mean, I know it's a formality, but he's not. And I think Caleb's going to be great. I love Caleb yeah. Williams. I think the Caleb Williams era in Chicago, I'm excited about it. Bears fans should be excited about it. And I, I, I'm okay using the word fair. I just, even with all the hype on this guy, I don't think it's fair to expect that of him day one. How many teams, and this is really what it's about for me, how many teams in the NFL do you expect, expect to be in the playoffs this year? That's a really good point. Chiefs, Six. Niners, yeah. Eagles. We're talking about the elite of the elite, the teams that have done it. That's who you expect to make the playoffs. I'm not putting the Chicago Bears and their rookie quarterback in that conversation. I think that's crazy talk, and I don't think it's fair to a guy that hasn't even practiced at the NFL level yet. That's just, that's just how I feel about it. It's and, fair because like, he's the savior. We don't know be. that yet. But he's supposed he's to be. He's to, he could be. We don't know what none they of them yeah, yeah, but, but even if they won 10 games this year and missed the playoffs, that doesn't mean that he's not the savior. No, and he could agreed. be a competent rookie. He could win rookie of the year, win 10 games, and they miss yeah. the playoffs. And it, So then what? Well, first off, I'm not saying if they miss the playoffs, it's a failure. failure. I'm, not, I'm not, not saying that at all. all. Not saying if that. that's not saying where that we're at, at then I'm, I'm, I'm just saying with, with what okay. he has and what we think he's going to be. Because everybody that gets their name called in this first round, we think they're going to be good. The second, third, and fourth, and all on down, we don't know. We're building our team with them, we don't know. But in the first round, you think they are going to be superstar players. That's why you draft them. Whoever drafted Marvin Harrison thinks this man is going to have 1,000 plus yards Every this year. year for the next you know 10 what I'm saying? Years. You think that he could come out there and be sorry we don't know but we think that that's what he's going to be with what we think of this guy and what we have seen if he was on the bears team last year we would say this bears team is going to be really really good with him in there right we would say that so this year coming in here with a better bitch. roster yeah. from top to bottom and you're upgrading with the quarterback spot, you have upgraded running back, you've upgraded receiver, and you still have the number nine pick to upgrade That's something crazy. else, they They're should have a chance with this man spot. if he is who he is to make the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. Having a chance to make the playoffs is different than making the playoffs, though. Like being competitive at the end of the year and making the playoffs. Well, like, I should change the, that. The, they should expect to make the playoffs. Yeah, I, I, I have no expectations. Expect is, when expect it comes is to a rookies. lot. Expect it's, is a lot. Not even number one overall picks? Because if you get drafted we, we number one overall... We don't, have, we don't have expectations of number one overall picks. We we all, we do not. Oh, I'm like, I for sure do. do but not, that's because... Because we do not talk about Bryce Young. We did not bring up Bryce Young once. No, nah, but we have, we have expectations. Like, I didn't expect Bryce to be as bad as he was, which is why we talked about I'm how bad Bryce was. We did not talk about it. But because I'm, he's a rookie... And it went badly. But, and we and I'm see, saying, I don't agree. Shay, I know Shady's yeah, like, on that. Factually, Shady's speaking, on that. Factually, we do not talk about Bryce Young. We did not have topics about how disappointing Bryce Young's seasons were. We are not crushing Bryce Young. We are not object like factually, we're not talking about it. How how people feel is a different conversation. What we're actually talking about is not Bryce but Young. I don't I'm think just, that was I don't think that's correlated to expectation. 
right? Like, we didn't talk about Bryce Young for a plethora exactly. of reasons. We didn't talk about Brian Burns, and Brian Burns a beast, too, but you're on the Panthers. I don't think that's correlated to expectations. He's the number one overall pick. Who was on the Panthers? We didn't talk about Trev his first year. Wait, he was on the Jack. Why do you say the Panthers dismissively and then talk about the Bears like they've done a whole lot more than the Panthers? So, Joy's point they five minutes the ago, the history. The like, Bright, you talk Bryce, about Chicago. The Bryce Young pick belonged to the Bears. Correct. That's how sorry they were. They were at the top of that draft and moved back. So, to, and the Bears have done a phenomenal job. I'll say it one more time. They have set themselves up so well. But, but right now, this is still a bad football yeah. team until they prove no otherwise. Doubt, but really quick, are we putting Bryce Young in the... Caleb no, Williams conversation? No, we're not. So that's all I'm saying. This man, everybody talks about this man like he the, the next greatest thing I mean, ever. Right, and, and, and we're maybe, not talking maybe, about maybe, Bryce Young maybe, like maybe, that. That's why the expectation is yeah, different. I, I hear you, but the number one overall pick has expectations. And maybe Caleb Williams does have more expectations that's because of the I'm way saying. that we talk about it. But the Bears made the playoffs once in your entire career in Green Bay. Because mm -hmm, we were beating them more. Ex what's, what's it in your mind to say about Chicago? Okay, I, I hope. He owns them. Okay? Yep, yep, yep. Like, this is I, I not, we can, we can, we, and listen, I love Chicago. It's a great American city. I, I visit often. Don't, don't hate me, okay? Because mm -hmm. I, I really do love the city. <laughs> but we're just, we're just saying facts here. I'm just saying what's happening. I'm just well, reading to history. Me what's that matter? It matters because of culture. And uh, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe I care too much about functionality. I think that the NFL particularly is a sport where functionality really matters. Who's in charge matters. The facilities that you have matter. Correct. Your coaching matters. matters. There's so many yes. moving parts. The energy in the building because you know how to win. That All mean? that matters. That's it like... means that he is responsible for a lot more than going into Chicago and playing a good rookie season. He is creating the Chicago Bears in the modern era. That is a lot. Yes. There's a lot of expectations outside. That sounds outside. so heavy when it you say is, it. Though. It, it is, though. They're is. not a winning right. organization. They have no identity. They don't win. They don't go to the job. playoffs. It's that, that that's simple. It's e that's very easy. You Correct. know what? That's easy when you're in Carolina. When you're in Chicago, when you are the Chicago Bears, when you are the number one overall pick who is who is a generational talent, who you put yourself in position to get because you basically fleeced the Carolina Panthers and they were that awful. This is a this is a quintessential moment in the history of the NFL what's happening and I, I don't think I'm being hyperbolic here okay. so to add all of that to a rookie quarterback and then sit back and say all this has happened for all these years we have no identity we have no culture we don't win we don't know what the coach is we've brought in all these pieces it's all on paper and you need to go and make the playoffs when you're in your division only you have the NFC champion the Detroit Lions who have been building consistently over the past couple years you have an ascending Green Bay Packers we're not even mentioning the Vikings. Like, like the Vikings can't steal a game or two. Sure. And, and you're just expected to go into the NFC and just make the playoffs. Uh, uh, Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.